Um, unit 15 in STE and unit 14 in uh, basic math for electricity and electronics is about triangles. Uh, it has a scary word in the title called trigonometry. I don't want you to say that word anymore. Until you're doing it, I don't want you to say that word anymore, okay? It's a scary word, and if that stops you from being able to do it, because fear can keep you from doing things, and so because of that, I don't want you to call it that until we're doing it, until everyone's doing it with no problem. And trust me, in a week or so, we'll all be doing these triangle problems. And as long as you look at them as just right triangles, they're nice and simple, okay? They really are very simple, especially if you have, just happen to have a TI-30X2S calculator. It makes it so simple, you just won't believe it. I'm telling you, it will, make, it will simplify your life vastly during these chapters, okay? So, uh, I, wanna, I wonder if I can modify this slide. I can't, okay. We're going to define a right triangle. We're going to talk about Pythagorean theorem, but I want to tell you right now, we're going to talk about it, and then I'm going to tell you, don't ever do it, okay? I know that Pythagoras was a brilliant guy. I know that it's a great idea, and I don't ever want you to do it ever again, all right? We're done doing Pythagorean theorem, okay? I don't want you to do it. Do you know why? Of course not. The reason why is, in electrical work, you never work with one triangle. Wrong answer. Everything in AC is a triangle, okay? So once you find out one triangle, that's nice. Okay, you got one. If you did it by Pythagorean theorem, congratulations, you're screwed. You're not going out any farther. You're done. Start over. Now you got to do your power. Let's say you did your resistance triangle and you found your impedance, your resistance, and your inductive reactance. That's the what we call the resistance triangle. And you could have something that subtracts from X sub L called X sub C. We'll get into that later. That's a whole different Oprah. But once you establish that, that's called the phase angle. And most circuits have a phase angle. And one of the things we're going to learn to do in the next semester, not this semester, is to change that phase angle because it affects the efficiency, the fundamental efficiency of the electrical circuit. Now, I'm giving away a bunch of circuit secrets because I want you to understand why we want to do this with triangles, not with Pythagorean theorem. So let's say we get the, we find a motor circuit, it's got some wires going to it, and it's just one simple circuit. It goes there, there's a motor, that's it, right? And we find the motor efficiency through the triangle, we get the phase angle for that electrical circuit. Okay, we got the resistance, we got the inductive reactance, and we got the impedance. Okay, is that enough? Hell no. We need to talk about power now. Now we want to know how much of this is going to be true power, how much is it going to be apparent power, and what are we going to have here as a side of the triangle we haven't defined yet called VARs. Volt amps reactive. That's another side of that triangle. And because of that, if we have the angle from the resistive triangle, we can take that right over and plug it in. We're done. Now, if we want to know the voltage drops across certain parts of the circuit, if we have that phase angle, we can just take it over and boop, plug it in and keep trucking. And that's why we need to do everything by triangles from now on, okay? You're done doing it with Pythagorean theorem. We're going to talk about it because sometimes it can be a shortcut. It's a good thing to know. That's fine. You know, the longest side squared is equal to the other two sides squared added together. That's nice and simple. You learned it in the third grade. Now we're going to stop doing that. We're going to do everything by calculator. We're going to do it by calculator. And just as an added bonus, it's never going to come out exact with our angles because to, leave, to make it really, really exact, we have to leave on these really long numbers. Oh, that's right. Our calculator will use the big long number. Ooh, we might keep some accuracy in there. Okay, so let's look at our slide here. Use, do not use a Pythagorean theorem to calculate right triangle values. We're not going to do that. Solve problems using sines, cosines, and tangents. We are going to do that. First, it would be a good idea to define what those things are. 
Okay, a right triangle has a 90 degree angle in one corner. And actually, we always draw it one way, but we'll talk about that later. Hypotenuse is always the longest one, the side opposite. If you're going to consider one angle, and we're going to kind of draw it with the angle, one angle down to the left and one 90 degree angle off to the right. And we're always going to look at that angle on the left as the angle, the angle, theta, angle theta. Whatever angle that may be, that's what we're going to talk about. And the side opposite is the side that's, if you draw a line right through the middle of that angle and go across, you're going to hit a side, right? That's the side opposite. You can find that one, right? Hypotenuse is always the longest one. That only leaves one side. So that one's called the side adjacent because it's next door. Adjacent means next to. That's all adjacent means. Um, adjacent to my home is this crack attic. <laughs> who lives the next house over. And next to that guy, there's this guy there that the uh, Antelope Valley sheriffs are looking for because he's a felon and they want to pick him up. So he's not adjacent, but the crack guy is adjacent, okay? So I know that's not a good example, but anyway, you get the picture. Okay, so here we have basic thing now we don't draw it this way we draw it with this angle over here over on our left but that's a minor point no big deal and once again the hypotenuse is the longest one and if this is our angle then our side adjacent I mean our side opposite is opposite our angle of consideration. Okay, and then the side adjacent is the one that's kind of left over. It's next to the angle and it's not the longest. Okay, Pythagorean theorem. Okay, you all know that from the third grade, fourth grade, or fifth grade, wherever you happen to learn it. Okay, Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse squared. And I don't even use C, A, and B when I write high, and and uh, when I write uh, Pythagorean theorem, I write H squared is equal to A squared plus B squared to remind me that H is always the hypotenuse. High length of the hypotenuse, length of one side. Okay, good stuff. Okay. Oh, I hate that word. Triangle functions also describe the mathematical relationships of the sides. That's what we want to get down to. Let's get down to that. All right. Okay, this is just describing the sides. I think we're going to go to the next one. Uh, sine function, sine of an angle is, e is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Okay. So let me give you a thing we're going to we're going to do again and again. Um, And we're going to remember this, as you know that I like, you guys all know that I like mnemonics, right? So you're going to remember this. You are going to remember this from now on. You're going to be using this for the rest of your electrical career, probably. And this is, oh hell, another hour of agony. Just like homework. Oh hell, another hour of agony. Oh hell, another hour of agony. One more time, nice and loud. That was terrible. One more time. Gone. Now that's sine, cosine, and tangent. And so you could turn this into SOH, COH, TOA, and that's SOHCAHTOA. Okay, sine, cosine, tangent. But if you remember, oh, hell, another hour of agony, it will simplify your life. Trust me. Okay, we're going to remember that. We're going to use it. We're going to use it. We're going to use it. You will have it memorized by the end of this semester, I guarantee you, even though that's only a few weeks away. Okay, the cosine is, oh hell, another hour, adjacent over the hypotenuse, okay? Then we have the tangent, which is um, 
the opposite over the adjacent. This Oscar had a heap of apples. I don't like that because it doesn't create much of a mind picture, okay? Oh, hell, another hour of agony. You're thinking of homework already, right? That's something familiar to you. Oscar and his apples held with him, okay? Uh, basic triangle functions and vectors. Okay, review already, okay? Good stuff. Uh, the sum of the angles of any triangle is 180 degrees. If you had the 90, the 30, the 60, you get a 90 and a 90, right? Okay. So you know that the two angles, let me go back just a second. You know that the two angles, since you've got a 90 in one corner, those other two angles have got to add up, add up to 90, right? Because occasionally we'll want to find that opposite angle, especially this week. Wait, wait a minute. Did I miss anything on that one? Uh, uh, uh. Okay, there's a relationship with the sides. Don't let me forget that. Um, cosine. I think we're going to run out of slides. And a simple saying that can be used is, oh, hell, another hour of agony. Not this one. Wait a minute. Let's go back and uh, let's deface this thing. Let's see. Oops. Okay. So you'll remember that, right? Okay, so we're done with this slideshow. Let me go to the next slide where it's blank. Oh, we don't even have anything. Okay, let me pull up the other one. Let me pause for a second while I pull up the other slideshow. All right, so we know that this one is the hypotenuse because why did it do that? Because it's the longest one. We're looking at our angle down here and if we just come out the middle of the angle that we're considering that of course is the side opposite. Well, the only time I'll write out the whole word opposite. And then down here, this one's left over. It's not the longest one, and it's right next to the angle. So we're looking at it, and this is the side side adjacent. Now I want you to realize that the relationship is a fractional relationship between these sides. Let's look at um, let's look at a different triangle for a moment. Let's let's draw one where we only have one up and four across. Okay. Well, let's do the other way. Let's go four up and. Looks more, doesn't look like much of a triangle that way, does it? Let's go four up and one over. And for those who are taking 116, recognize this as the latter lean angle that you're allowed to put it up at, right? No more than for every four up, one out at the bottom, right? No more than one, I mean at least one, no more than four up and one across. You want it to be no steeper than that angle, right? Now I have a question for you. You realize that we have a hypotenuse here, right? You've got a hypotenuse here. And where's our angle? Right here? Because we've got a 90 right here, right? So this is our angle, so that makes this the side opposite. And so that makes this the adjacent is 1. Everybody agree with that? Okay. Now, we don't know the hypotenuse, right? Now, I have a question. If we're looking at a really big ladder and a really big wall we want to get up on, and we know that it's a 40-foot wall or a 40-foot length we want to go up, and we need to go out that same ratio so we create that same angle, 
we would scale this up to 10, right? So 40 and 10. Okay, let's look at that as a triangle. And now we have 10 across and 40 up. Is that going to be the same angle right here? Absolutely. So we scaled it up, right? Can we scale this down to 2 feet and half a foot? So we can change the length of the sides, but the angle or the relationship between the sides stays the same. What sides do we have? What function do we have right now? If we've got O and A, somebody say tangent. We have a tangent. So if we want to know what angle this is, we can pull out our handy-dandy TI-30X2S calculator, do that now, turn it on, and hit clear twice. And now, I'm going to stop for a second while everybody gets ready. Now. The ratio stay the same. We see a four to one ratio here in the little triangle, four to one, right? That same ratio, if you break it down, 40 to 10 is the same ratio, is it not? Right? It's the same ratio. If you multiply it, you know, you, you can scale it up. When we scale this down to T, to 0.5. Is that the same ratio? It's the same ratio. So for every angle, the ratio for the opposite over the hypotenuse, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, or the opposite over the adjacent, the ratios are all going to be the same numeric number. So you can, when you want one and you've got two sides, you can literally just divide it and get fraction, and the, here's the bad news, we want a four-point fraction, we want four, two, four significant numbers, so that we can tell what it really is doing, at least, because that's still really not enough, but we're going to solve it for most of the time, and that ratio is the same for all triangles with that angle, so that's a neat thing, okay, now, let's just look at what that means for each angle. Okay. Let's draw our little triangle again. We've got a right triangle here. We've got an angle over here. So now we have the hypotenuse here, the side opposite over here, and the side adjacent here. Now let's look at what the sine is. Sine is O help. The opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay. Now let's look at the cosine. And that's O hell another hour. Okay, and look at this. This is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And it's just a fraction. It's nothing to be afraid of. And then finally, we have the tangent. And that is, oh no, another hour of agony. O over A. So we have O over A. All right, now let's go back to my little drawing, see if I can get back to there. No, I guess not. Whoops, there it is. Okay, we had my funny little drawing for the angle you can lean a ladder at, right? And we knew two things. We know the side opposite and we know the side adjacent, right? And for our tangent, the tangent 
of any angle, and we're going to start using theta for any angle, is equal to, oh hell, another hour of agony, right? So let's plug some numbers in there. Let me get this out of, out of the way. And so what is the side opposite? Four, right? Over one. In other words, this fraction is a whole number, right? So the tangent of theta is equal to four, right? Okay, so let's pull out our handy dandy TI 30X for that. Now what we're doing is we're not finding the tangent of an angle. We have the tangent. The tangent is four, right? We're finding what angle has that tangent. So we're going to do the opposite of what we would normally do sometimes. And we're going to find the new button on our calculator. We found it before the second function, that one in the upper left-hand corner. It's either blue or yellow. And hit second function. Now hit tangent. And now put in four. And enter. 75.96 degrees. That is this angle right down here where the blue is drawn. This is 70, what is it? 75.963 degrees. Now, if we have that angle and a side, we can find anything else. Let's say that we want to find, we're looking at a 40 foot wall. And we want to take the ladder out 10 feet. How long has the ladder got to be just to touch the top of the wall? Which by OSHA would not be allowed, right? We need three foot or more. Feet. Yeah. Isn't it it's not going to be 40 feet because 40 feet is one of the sides and the hypotenuse is always the longest. Wait, 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 wait. Let's find, let's take the cosine of this thing. Now let's get rid of this stuff. And let's put in the cosine of theta. Now we know what theta is, so that's no longer a mystery. So cosine of theta is cosine of 75.963 degrees. Now that's in your calculator, so don't take it out. Don't hit anything else. Just leave it alone for a second. Is equal to, what is it? Oh hell, another hour, right? Well, look at this. Isn't this a number? It is a number, right? Now, I want you to leave the number in your calculator, okay? If you didn't do it yet, do the second function tangent for enter. If you haven't done it before, do it now. If you haven't done it before, do it now. Everybody got that in your calculator now, right? Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do a trick here. We're going to use the answer we found last because our calculator will leave that whole long number, okay? It's gonna leave that whole number. So we want the cosine of that angle, right? So now we're gonna hit cosine, find the cosine button and just hit cosine. Now go back and hit second function and go down to the lower right where there's a dash in the lower right, right hand, white right button where it says answer right above and push that. Second function, answer, enter. And it's going to tell you the cosine of this angle. So 0.214. Okay, the cosine of theta is what? Two five. Thank you. Okay. So now we have a solid number. As soon as we have a function, and we, I mean, we, so as soon as we have an angle, we have three pieces of information: the sine, cosine, and tangent of that angle, right? So cosine is A over H, right? Everybody agrees with that? We know A, don't we? 10 over H is equal to this. Now we're going to do a little algebra magic from the 8th grade or the 9th grade or the 10th grade, wherever you happen to have that. And we're going to exchange. If we have A is equal to b over c, we can always multiply both sides by c, and that will drop out, and then divide both sides by a, 
and we'll get C is equal to B over A. Everybody understand that? In other words, let's make that simpler, and we're going to use the Hiro Yoshida slip and slide, and we're going to just take this one here and put that one there, and we get a new thing. Let me do a little erasing here because it's getting a little messy. And we're going to say that we now have the cosine of theta is equal to 0 0.2425. Two four, sorry. And that's equal to 10 over H. And now we're going to switch these two. And we're going to wind up with 10 divided by 0.2425 is equal to H. Everybody okay with that? Everybody follow along and see what I did? It's not that hard. It's very simple algebra. Now we have a solid number on the right and our variable on the left. Just what we want, right? So 10. Now what do we have in our calculator? We have 0.2425, right? And a long number behind it, right? We're going to use that function of the calculator again that doesn't happen in other calculators. We're going to put in 10. Put in 10. Don't do anything else. Just put in 10. Now divide by. Now hit second function answer again. It'll plug in the last answer we got. Now hit enter. And son of a gun, we have the answer. What is it? Somebody say it loud. Point 23. 41.23. So we know that we're going to have to have a ladder that's more than 41.23 feet long. Right? And actually we're going to have to add three feet to that because OSHA says it's got to stick up three feet to that. So we're going to need a 44 foot, 44 and a quarter foot ladder. And they don't make that. We can't get there from here because the longest extent ladder is 44 feet. <laughs> Quick question. All right. Um, I want to stop for a moment because I think we're making some progress and erase the board basically and we'll start again. Okay, now what I try and always talk about is things that you're actually going to use, right? So one of the things you're going to do one of these days, you're going to bend conduit. Now, how you build an offset, in other words, kind of right along the straight and level, and then you need to get over an object. And so you have to pick it up, and you kick back down the thin mount so that it winds up going level again, right? Let's say we're going to go over a 10-inch object. All right? Now, we know that we're going to use one of a couple of different angles because we're familiar with it. Now, if we bend this thing up, let's say 30 degrees, and we know that we're going to have to bend this conduit back down, it would have been up here. We're going to bend it back down 30 degrees at this point, right? And this is going to be then at this point. What is that distance? What do we call this distance between those two marks that we're going to put on the pipe to bend them? We call that the hypotenuse. Yeah. So suddenly we have a use for this thing, right? Now we have the two pieces of information we need to know. That's all we need to know. We know we're going to go over an object that's 10 minutes high, and we're going to have a degree of 30 degree kick, right? That's all we need to know. Trust me. Because what do we have? We have three pieces of information, sine, cosine, and tangent, because we've got the angle, right? We know we're going to bend it at 30 degrees, because we can bend it at anything we want to bend it at, right? We found this, that, and the other thing. We don't want to do this angle, that angle. We need to go about 30 degrees. Let's say there's some objects in the way. There's some conduits here going across it, and there's something else going across in here, and there's a beam in here. And we need, really need to go about a 30-degree angle. And we did that with a stick and a, and a protractor to kind of ballpark where we would need to go through this hole, right? That happens. You've got to make it go where it's got to go. Sometimes you don't get a choice, okay? 
So here we are, we're going to bend this conduit at 30 degrees. Now, we have a couple pieces of information, right? Let's put that down. Sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, we have the side opposite, right? Because we always, well, almost always call this our angle. So that's our side opposite. And this is O-Hell, another hour of agony. And I suggest that every time you go to do a triangle for a while, draw this set of information over here on the left-hand corner. Sine, cosine, tangent. O-Hell, another hour of agony. When you do a quiz, the first time you do a quiz with this stuff, I want you to write, as soon as the test begins, find a blank page, piece of paper on the, on the uh, test and write sine, cosine, tangent, oh hell, another hour of agony. Okay? Then you have all the information you're going to need. Your calculator will, will serve you and your brain will serve you from there on. It'll, everything else is in the bag. Okay? Now, you'll notice that what we want to find is the hypotenuse, right? So let's look at the formulas that have hypotenuse in them. We've got two of them, right? We're looking for that. And we've got any one of these because we've got the angle, right? And then the thing we're looking for is the, I mean, we're looking for the hypotenuse, and that's in two formulas, and we have the side adjacent. That settles it for us. We want to use the cosine. Can we see that? Because... The cosine of 30, is equal to what? Let's pull out a handy MGI 30 calculator. We're going to hit clear twice, and we're just going to put in cosine 30, enter. And we're going to get a solid number. Point eight six six zero two five something 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 something. Now leave it in your calculator just the way it is, because it's got a longer number than you would you would normally truncate it down to four numbers, right? And you're going to add a little rounding error every time you do that, right? Okay. So now we know that that is equal to what? A over H. And we have one of those things, don't we? Which one of these do we have? The A or the A? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm doing the wrong angle completely. Sorry. Okay. We don't want the cosine. We want the sine. My apologies. So we want the sine because we want the side opposite because that's what we have. Okay. So they, this is the wrong angle. Whoops. Oh, no. Give me my thing back here. I lost my. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll restart here with the right angle, the right function, I should say. And we want the sine because the sine has what we, what we want and what we're looking for. We're looking for the hypotenuse, and we have the side opposite. So we know we're not looking for cosine or the tangent. Okay, so we found the sine at 30 of 30 degrees is 0.5, and that's equal to O over H. Everybody agrees with that, right? And we're looking for H. So we're going to take the O out, and we're going to plug in the number we have for the side opposite, which is 10. Now, once again, we have to do the here we repeat a flip and slide, and we're going to exchange these two numbers, and we're going to get 10 divided by 0. 0.5 is equal to h. And uh, yeah, it is 20, no doubt about it. So the distance between our bins here is going to be 20 inches. And we're going to do it with a 30 degree bin, 
as long as we don't roll one of the bins, we'll get a nice flat offset. Okay. Now I can talk about other uses for this stuff, but we can get it into AC real quickly, which we will do, but not until next week. Okay. So now you can see that these triangular fraction relationships are very, very handy, right? You're trying to find a triangle, and remember, everything in AC is done with triangles. It's not done trying to add stuff up like we do here in DC. Okay? So, this is going to be very important stuff. And I think that's going to be, we're going to stop and take a break, I think. And so let's stop the little recording.